Welcome to CFTC Talks. I'm Andy Bush, Chief Market Intelligence Officer for the CFTC. Hey, just a quick reminder as always, there's a disclaimer at the end of the show that's important for you to listen to. Just for fun, we have a special interruption to our normal scheduling. We're going to do our first flash cast. I know what you're thinking. What is a flash cast, Andy? What are you doing? Well, it's a podcast that's short and on a single subject. Now, I gotta tell you, most of you probably been hearing about the research MIB or the market intelligence branch has been creating. And for our listeners, uh, for those of you who don't know, MIB uh, was designed to understand, analyze, and communicate current and emerging derivative markets, dynamics, developments, and trends. Like, for instance, it, you know, this is an example, like the impact of new technologies and trading methodologies. And what's exciting about what's going on at MIB is that we have recently published three new pieces of research under this charge. And for those of you who want to read them, you can get the research from the MIB team by going to cftc.gov, click on the market data and analysis button, and then click on staff reports. I know it's a little bit buried, but you can find them there. But today we thought we'd make it even easier for you to encounter the research by bringing it to your ears. So we're going to bring on an MIB staff member, John Coughlin, to talk about his recent research. Now, John is a market analyst in MIB and one of the staff contributors to the research piece entitled Sharp Price Movements in Commodity Futures Markets. John, welcome to CFTC Talks Flashcast. Hey, Andy, thanks for having me on the show. Hey, John, it's great to have you on. For our audience, Maybe you could just start off by explaining what the driver was for creating this piece of research. Like, why did you do it? Yeah, so as you're well aware, flash crashes and other market disruptions are always on the minds of regulators. So when you and Chairman Giancarlo created the market intelligence branch last year, this was one of the first topics that came up as something we needed to investigate. So that was really the impetus for the project. Can I just ask, you you just said uh, flash crashes. But your article is sharp price movements. Was there a reason why you didn't use like flash crashes in the title? Yeah, so one of the first things we noticed when looking into the research was uh, the term flash crash is not really formally defined. So uh, the first step we took in, in, in the research was to define a, a clear me- quantitative metric to identify what we would consider a sharp price movement in the data. And right. so that was really what led our research. Well, and there's not many of them of what anybody would consider a flash crash, right? I mean, so so you're, you wouldn't be able to do much research if it was only on like four or five events. So may, maybe that'll help us segue into how did you actually go about the research? Like, what data sets did you use? Yeah, so all the data we used was sourced from our very detailed transaction-level data we get uh, directly from the futures exchanges. So, like I said, we, we defined a clear a quantitative metric to uh, to identify sharp price movements in the data. And so what we did was we picked the largest percentage price change observed in a rolling three-minute window as the primary metric. So we wanted to capture the types of movements that were uh, – very, very fast, uh, but also, um, you know, something that both a human and a machine could react to in real time in the market. So once we had that metric, we turned that metric loose on a really big sample of data. We analyzed 2.2 billion transactions that occurred between 2012 and 2017. So that's with the, John, just slow, slow down and say 2.2 billion, right? That's with a B. Yes, billion with a B. Yeah, we okay, have a lot sorry. of data at the CFTC. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Well, yeah, and so I think we, that's we, a per- great point. Just And again, I'm, I'm interrupting you, and I know you want to get into this, but that's what's unusual about this agency, right? We have huge data sets that we are sent that allow us to do this research. Yeah, we have data, especially in the future side, we have data from every exchange traded futures transaction. So, you know, there's, you know, billions a year. And, uh, and so that's, that was the primary source for this data. Okay, great. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, no. So, I mean, that, that was really the main, the main point of it. So um, once, the, uh, once the data was analyzed, you know, we, we crunched all the numbers and then we determined the top 100 price movements in each contract was really the most interesting sample of events for further analysis. And that's then the sample that we based the rest of the research on was this like the 100 biggest price movements in, in a rolling three minute window observed in each contract. Right. So you went from 2.2 billion transactions down to because you covered 16 contracts, right? So 1600 uh, data events, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so we and we picked uh, generally the most liquid contract in each major market sector. So, you know, financials, metals, whatever. Well, what were the findings then? 
So uh, there were three main findings. Uh, first, neither the frequency nor intensity of sharp price movements appear to be consistently increasing over time. So that was the big one. There doesn't seem to be a time trend to these uh, in, in the recent five years. Mm -hmm. uh, and second, sharp price movements are primarily linked to volatility, market fundamentals, and news releases. So this research does not show signs of weakness or fragility in the futures markets causing disruptive price movements on a large scale. And third, and most importantly, the U.S. commodity futures markets are very efficient. Are very efficient. They incorporate new information really quickly and continue to be the premier price discovery mechanism for global commodity markets. You know, what's interesting, those three things are fascinating. Number one, you're not seeing, like, the increase in, in these events, right? So you're not, over time, you're not seeing, like, in 2017 and 2018, there were a lot more of these things. So, so that's interesting. Um, number two, I think, to me, what's interesting as well is that, I know this is going to come as a complete shock to anybody who's trading out there, but it, you know, economic releases, um, <laughs> you know, uh, Federal Reserve policy, right? These are the things that drive these big sharp price movements. It's not some uh, particular market structure issue. I, am I reading that right? Yeah, totally. I mean, that was really one of the concerns that uh, that we had starting the research, and is actually what we set out to try to find was any kind of disconnect between large price movements and volatility, or large price movements and, and news releases, because we knew these were drivers of large price moves. But we wanted to see if there were sort of these basically like exogenous shocks happening in the market. We didn't we didn't see them on a on a wide scale. This is a very broad look across a lot of markets. So there are some, you know, we saw some little blips here and there. But for the most part, on a large scale, that, that doesn't seem to be happening. So I guess that and, and that segues into what were the major takeaways from the research? I mean, they, you expand that out just a little bit. Yeah, so the, I think the, the chairman said it best in, his, in a recent speech. I think the biggest takeaway is that our research really dispelled the contemporary narrative that recent changes in, in market structure, especially like the growing presence of principal trading firms and high-frequency trading, has in some way made markets less stable. So our research refutes that notion and shows that there really isn't a time trend toward more frequent short-term price swings, and many of the biggest price swings can be exchanged, uh, explained by market volatility and news events. So there really doesn't appear to be a widespread market structure issue at the moment, and that, that that part was definitely not the initial intent of this study, but that's actually what the data wound up showing. Yeah, isn't that interesting? I mean, like you didn't set out to try to prove or disprove that. It just spilled out from what you were doing. So I guess, I mean, it sounds like there's, there's for the future, there, there, there appears to be a, a, some additional areas that you're going to be researching or, or following up on this. Absolutely. Yeah, this is definitely the tip of the iceberg for us in MIB. And um, this, this work actually wound up providing a really nice foundation for future studies. So um, now that we have some context for what the world of big intraday price moves looks like, we're going to focus on things like thinner, less liquid markets, um, how persistent market disruptions are in market quality, and the anatomy of flash crashes and the types of market participants that are most often involved. And just like with this report, we'll share our findings with the public as they become available. Oh, fantastic. All right. Market analyst from CFTC's MIB, John Coglin. thanks for coming on the show today. My pleasure, Andy. This was great. All right. That's our first CFTC Talks Flashcast. I hope you enjoyed it. And check out the research MIB has on our website. I'm Andy Bush, Chief Market Intelligence Officer. Thanks for listening. This has been CFTC Talks. But wait, we're not done yet. It's time for a disclaimer. The CFTC is providing this information as a public service, and it is neither a legal interpretation nor a statement of CFTC policy. Reference to any specific product, service, trademark, manufacturer, or service provider does not constitute an endorsement or recommendation by the CFTC. The CFTC is not liable to any consumer or any third party for any direct, indirect, incidental, consequential, special, or exemplary damages or lost profit related to the use of the information provided or referenced in this podcast. Selection of guests on the podcast does not imply an endorsement of any particular individual or entity. Many individuals and entities provide similar services to those of the guests. The views and opinions expressed by the guests in the podcast are their own and not specifically endorsed by the CFTC. Moreover, the information provided in this podcast should not be construed as investment advice. Consumers should rely on their own inquiries as to accuracy and relevance of the information incorporated or referenced in this podcast and assume the entire risk related to its use. The CFTC is providing its interpretation of market trends solely to inform the public of a framework for projecting possible outcomes under different scenarios. If you have any questions concerning the meaning or application of a particular law or rule administered by the CFTC, please consult an attorney. Thank you.